Welcome back to my messy workbench. Wait a minute, it's not that messy. Yep, for the first time since 2012 when I set up my channel, I have cleaned this up. And, well, at least relatively, it's not as bad as it was. I also built this shelving unit. I just bought two boards of pre-finished shelving cut one of the boards down to make legs, screwed it together, and there you go. So if you build one of these things, you know, don't make the shelf too tall because you want to have easy access and eye level viewing of your equipment. Bought another one of these little storage units here, they're about 12 bucks. 15 bucks for the shelving material and screws. So I have all the storage now. And these little multicellular units. So I'm all set. Well, just wanted to mention that before I get started. A couple other things I wanted to say. Um, making a change in my life, and I'll cover that in another video. I, now, I did say that I would be making other videos not electronics related. But, you know, I know some people like my channel for the electronics, but those are not going to make the electronics videos any less. I'll still have as many. It's just that I'll fill this channel out more with other subjects. And they won't be as common as the electronics videos, but that's my plan anyway so I just want to mention that before we get on the subject here I seem to be running in a trap for young players as Dave on EEV blog would say and the issue I'm having is in some of my earlier videos I made transistor preamps I made a tube preamp and it never fails somebody comes along and plugs a speaker into the output of the circuit expecting it to give them sound well it's a pre-amplifier circuit it's not a power amp speakers need power to make the cones move enough to produce a lot of sound these are fairly high impedance circuits relative to a loudspeaker that boost a voltage so here is a little example circuit. It's not a perfect preamplifier, but it works. I used everything. All the resistor values are based on multiples of 10. You know, keep it simple. It's kind of biased heavy for a preamp. It draws around 6 milliamps, whereas you'd want more like 1 milliamp, give or take, for a actual preamp stage but I'm doing that to give it to ben the benefit of the doubt for driving a loudspeaker just to show you why you really don't want to do that so what I've done I I built the circuit out on the breadboard very simple and we'll put a signal into it so I have the function generator connected to the input of the amplifier and the scope probe is also connected to the input so you turn on the function generator and you see here I have about 300 millivolts of signal going into the amplifier so now I'll relocate the scope probe to the output of the amplifier and as you can see it's a much larger signal, I've got to turn that down. So now we're getting about 2.8 volts. Well the voltage gain of this amplifier is roughly the ratio of these two resistors which is 10. And that's about what we're getting. In the real world it's not going to be that because there's actually more to the calculation but you know this is good enough. And it comes out about uh, 9.3 times. So the amplifier is actually giving us quite a bit of amplification of that signal. Now watch what happens when I connect the speaker lead 
to the output of the amplifier. I have an 8 ohm speaker and grab it here. And look what happened. Pretty much collapsed down to nothing. You can hear the tone a little bit, but it's pretty weak. Let me turn that up. And there's a lot of noise, but I'm down to about 34 milli millivolts RMS. I am picking up noise. If I touch the input, you know, the function generator, it's picking up some electrical noise. That's why you see that. It's getting amplified. But that's beside the point. So when I connected this 8 ohm speaker, we lost quite a bit of our original signal. It's actually 10 times less than the signal we were putting in. So why is that? Well, if you look at the circuit from our supply voltage, there's that 1K resistor. So that's going to limit the current quite a bit that goes into this amplifier. And if you connect an 8 ohm speaker to that, it's going to pull the voltage way down, as we just saw. So it's not going to make a very good power amplifier at all, as you can see. Now, some of you guys who watch my channel who already know a lot about this might say, well, why can't I just put a impedance matching transformer? Now, we got roughly 1K to 8 ohm matching here so we had a 1k transformer that converted down to 8 ohm impedance would that help yep you would certainly get more output but you have to remember you can only get so much power from the circuit because of that you know their supply voltage with this 1k resistor you know, it's really going to limit the power that circuit can amplify. Now, in the other video, I had a power transistor on a heat sink and much stronger bias circuit. You know, of course, these are Class A, so is that circuit. And, you know, its quiescent current was, I forget, it was like 600 milliamps or something like that. So, yeah, it had a lot more drive current. For driving an 8 ohm load but again this circuit is just not going to do it so in a nutshell that's why you don't want to connect a speaker to a preamp you're just not going to get enough amplitude from it to drive that speaker well that's it thanks for watching